I want to do some experiments with taking a standard jar, like, a, you know, for canning purposes, and putting it on top of a few of these. One thing I've been thinking about, just because I've had to do hundreds of dollars of repairs to my kiln, when I look at this is a really tight fit. If it's upright, you know, by the way, I didn't even bother cleaning off the stickers, those will burn off, but if it's upright, maybe as this melts down, it'll, it, it could pull the whole thing off to the side. Uh, so I was thinking with the thick glass, it'll kind of get things going. I'm worried about this, like not letting air out somehow, like this popping and poop, you know, and it shoots off or just burps, a, a, I don't know. I don't know, I worry about that and I feel like this right here is probably more of a safe move from a burping kind of standpoint. But I don't know, tell me what you think. Is one more risky than the other? I'm kind of tempted to do both. But maybe, for example, because I have the biggest catchment here, maybe this is the one. Maybe this will be the one. Yeah, let's do that. I think for this one, we'll go like that. So this is a um, Crown Royal, I think. You know, they come free with a bottle. Someone buys you a gift and great. Now I have two glasses with a logo on it. But it's really thick and heavy. And I'm just curious to know, is that going to make it more of a hot mess or is that going to make it extra gooey and I get to get rid of the glass, so. Okay, so I wanted to show you how I set this up. I decided to go ahead and only fire two um, but instead of throwing five in here and getting a real big mess. Let's do two. You can see I've propped up some bricks. In case they fall over, they won't hit the wiring and I want to point something out I'm not sure if you're going to see with this lighting do you see there's red and black speckles on the wall and what that is from is from a very similar test probably six months ago where I took little glass vials like test tubes almost and set them face down on a tile filled with glaze thinking they would make a pattern and they ended up kind of exploding and peppering glaze all over the inside of the kiln. So I am nervous about that. If this is going to go wrong, that's what's going to happen with one or both of these. So I'm only going to do two and then we'll see what happens. Well, it's the morning and good news. No evidence of explosions, uh, puddles of glass at the bottom of those bowls, but let's get these out and take a look. Well, I think that looks pretty freaking cool. We have a big mess of glass inside. I did, I don't know how this slipped my mind, but this has a hole because this was made to be a planter. And so I did have glass run out and it just took a little bit of the kiln shelf coating with it. So I am going to try to snap this out and then grind the foot, but I think that looks really good. Uh, you can see this black glaze here wasn't touched by glass, but where it was, like I expected, it broke to blue. And it looks like our glaze has just ended up down in the bottom. You can see we got a whole bunch of glass down there at the bottom. But this one didn't stick. It has these drips here. It's kind of interesting. Let's, let's take a look. I think this turned out pretty cool. I mean, really heavy crazing on the glass, obviously. You can see this kind of red and seafoam green chunk that ended up getting to stay on the side. So you can see there are parts here where it's, I, this is the celadon, celadon by itself up here. 
sell it on over the gloss base number two and then just just the white on the bottom it's also interesting I don't know what it picked up but it really looks opaque and white like there it's not clear like I expected so that's interesting so because I'd like to put this into use and I don't feel comfortable having these drips be the feet there you know that something's gonna break I don't want anyone to get cut and I want to put some sort of little foot so I could have it just sit up like that and either as a standalone piece or you know putting some flowers in it maybe but so I have a, a scrap piece of walnut and I've marked out a circle and I'm going to take it over to the bandsaw we're going to cut this out go to the wood lathe and make a little foot the foot it's kind of unique I've never done that before I'm not sure I've seen something like that but it's just epoxied on with some T88 it's really strong epoxy so that'll be a permanent install and I'm just gonna leave the wood with an oil finish no polyurethane coating um, I will wax it in a few days but I think that turned out really cool so those worked out really well I want to do it again so let me show you what I want to do I'm going to take this little bisquare stand up that I've previously thrown. It's always good to keep a bunch of these around, at least for me. We're going to set this cup on here. We're going to set this bottle on top. And we're going to put the glass on it and we're going to melt this. But first, I, I also want to dip this in some thick red and we'll see if we can get some streakiness. So I have the glass set on top, I have it dipped in the red. Oof, it's tippy. This is how I want to put this one in. So I have a little upside down bud vase that's been glazed, so these two will stick together. And I've also rim dipped it in red. And I'm curious to see on this one, because the rim in the funnel kind of shape, it almost seems like it would want to suck the majority of this jar inside which would be great because there's no way it's going to all go in there and maybe this outer glass will drip and it won't go as far because more goes inside but we'll, we will see and you can see this still has the sea foam I put in it even though we've now seen from the first test that all of that will likely end up down in the down in the bowl this minute I decided might as well get this one fired too I have it set up quite tall in a small bowl you can see I'm getting more confident that this is not going to fall over in the kiln but I still will put this probably towards the center of the shelf just in case so it doesn't hit the the elements so those are the three okay so here's how we're putting them in the kiln and hopefully nothing falls over so we'll see what it looks like in the morning well it's the next morning and test fire number two looks like no failures, so that's exciting. It's always nerve. <laughs> I'm just waiting to open this thing up and see a big hot mess, but two firings in a row. No uh, tip overs, the bowls worked great. So let me get them out and we'll take a look. So if you recall both this one and this one, 
the bottom piece was glazed so uh, clearly that's probably a mistake I wish I could have snapped this off I still will try and because uh, I don't think I'm gonna get this out but I might be able to snap this off maybe but nonetheless very similar to what we saw in the first attempt I did grind this down But to no avail, this will be a kind of a junk piece. But I wanted to point out that I have more red up on the rim. See if you can pick up on that. There's a little bit. So that's kind of cool. It doesn't really show up down here. I think that there's just so much cobalt in the black glaze that when it ran down the side it kind of disappeared but now I think this is cool this shows promise so let's take a look at the next one so this one here is not glazed on but you can see right there got some glass that got up in there so I am somewhat optimistic that I'll be able to snap that off but so, I don't know. Not really getting any other colors. A little bit of sea foam at the bottom. Very similar to what we saw before. Now this one, if you recall, we supported it underneath. So, I think this one looks the best out of maybe all of the tests I've done, both today and yesterday. I really like how the red came through in kind of a weird way. You can see it's definitely crazy. That's to be expected. And if you recall, this one was the tumbler. This was not one of the ball jars. This was actually a tumbler. So the glass was thicker. I think that's super interesting. Very shiny. But it's nice, it's not like super rough, like it would cut your fingers. Maybe there's one little rough spot right there. I'm bummed I chose to glaze this on because I might have had, there was a lot of glass. I don't know if I could have snapped it off, but that's a mistake. I think moving forward, I'm gonna, I would put these on as small of a piece as possible so I have as much chance as possible of snapping it off But yeah, I think that's my favorite. I just don't know if I care for the cup. I know I don't care for the cup. Quick update, I was able to take off camera a hammer and break off that piece. Um, this is actually the inside of that cup. But as you can see, I took a grinder to it and I got it down to where the glass now touches. And it's not like I'm gonna offer this for sale, but now it can actually be used.